Today I'm going to be making a small bud vase. I sketched out some possible shapes and I usually do this with a vase because unlike a bowl which I can really picture in my mind I have a little bit more trouble with a vase and it helps me to have a picture. So the one that I'm focusing on today is this one. I have done a couple of them and I still don't have the shape down so let's see if I can get it this time. So I'm starting off with um, one and a half pounds of clay and I'm going to center it. I'm not going to give you too much information on centering today since since I just want to get that um, get to the making of the vase but if you're if you are curious about learning more about centering I do have a video on centering that you could watch. All right. So unlike with bowls, which I would um, always trim a foot in, with vases I don't trim a foot. So I'm going to open it up down as far, you know, I'm going to open the hole up as close to the base as I want for the thickness of the of the base of the vase, and that's about maybe a quarter of an inch. Um, so to do that, I'm going to put my two pink thumbs together and I'm going to press them against each other, drill down into the center of the clay, and then pull my thumbs away from each other to open it up all the way. All right. Then I compress, always compress. Keeps you from getting those nasty S cracks. So I'm just taking my fingers in this position and going back and forth a little bit of water slip and um, pressing down pressing pretty hard and I do it maybe eight to ten times I don't really count I just kind of do it by feel all right so now I'm going to um, bring the clay up for the first time but I'm gonna also collar it in at the same time because I'm trying to make a narrow cylinder to start with. So I'm going to take my hands with my thumbs on the inside and my hands on the outside and I'm going to pinch my thumbs towards my hands and pull my hands up at the same time. And pushing with my inside hand toward my thumb it makes uh, a cone shape. So let's just make sure there's enough room for my hand. I'm not pulling anything up right now. I'm just making sure I have a nice straight, well, that the walls are straight. Okay, so now I like to use a sponge. Everybody's different on how they throw. I'm going to put a little bit of water, not a lot, put my hand inside here, and pressing on the base to gather up the clay. I'm pressing harder up with my um, outside hand than my inside hand so that I can make sure to keep the cylinder somewhat narrow. And then as I get to the top one-third where the walls have thinned out some, I'm not really putting any pressure. I'm just pulling my hands up till I get to the top. I find that if I take my hands off um, before I get to the top, I have a tendency to throw it off a little, throw the cylinder off. So I don't like to do that. All right, so let's do our second pull. The cylinder is getting a little bit narrower on the second pull. I want to make sure I can keep my hand in there fit. I did one earlier where my hand barely fit and got caught against the side of the wall and I twisted it and it was quite the mess. All right, not twisted my hand, but twisted the pot. I do have a little twist here, but I'm going to ignore that. All right, and for a last pull. This clay is pretty soft, so it's uh, it's just soft. There's nothing more to say about that. It's a little wet. All right, so I think that's about good for the height, and I did narrow it up a little bit more, but I should still be able to get my hand in there. So now I'm going to take a whoops 
rib with a straight edge. I like this one. And I'm going to clean up the wall. So I'm going to put my hand inside. And I'm just going to push the my fingers against the straight edge of the rib. I'm going to get rid of all of that slip. Compressing the walls helps strengthen them. And um, getting rid of all the slip is also, the, the slip just weakens the walls because it's kind of wet and gunk gunky. All right. I'll clean my wheel up a little. It's kind of a mess. All right. So this um, particular shape that I'm doing, I, I need to um, collar in, which is to bring in the walls uh, of the cylinder so that I can... Um, have a narrow neck. So what I'm doing is I am putting my hands together in this shape and keeping them as um, even as pre the pressure as even as possible with all sides of my hands, squeezing in a little bit, very light touch, and pulling up as I go. Collaring is not an easy thing to learn. At least it wasn't for me. So if you get frustrated doing this, just keep trying and eventually it will make sense. When you're first starting out with collaring, the biggest problem is that you end up pressing too hard in one spot and not enough in the other. And you, the walls that are coming, that are um, that you're creating, the thickening walls, end up being very uneven thicknesses. Because as you're collaring it in, the, the walls are getting much thicker. So now I'm going to thin out the walls some by pulling up this, um, doing a pull with that section that I just narrowed. I need a little bit of water. I have a tendency to make the wheel go too fast at this point. I, I, it really, for me anyway, I should have a slower wheel when I'm doing this part because it's really easy to throw the neck off when it's this narrow. Okay, so now we have a narrow neck, and you're thinking, well, how the heck is she gonna get <laughs> get the the part pushed out over there? So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna push the neck out a little bit to make room for this throwing stick that I'm gonna use. I'm going to do that, and when I'm done, I can. It, clay has memory, and I'll be able to push it in again. But it looks like I didn't narrow enough, so I'm actually going to narrow a little bit more down there. Okay. All right, let's see. Okay, so this is the throwing stick. It's by MKM. It's a, I think it's a T2. Let's clean that off. Let's see, not, not, it's not that side. Yes, yeah, so it's an MKM T2 throwing stick. And it has this little rib on the bottom, which you can barely see because it's, it's covered in clay. And I just started using this. This is actually my first time using it, and I really like it. It's It's got a nice straight um, handle well, with a little bit of a curve. And the, the, the you I guess you can move this around if you want, but the position it's in is perfect for me. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to, go down the, the pot, it's okay if I push it off a little, all the way down to the bottom. And then I'm going to press with the, um, the rib and slowly go up. You should be able to see where I'm pressing by the um, vase coming out a little bit. Oops, I'm going to make the wheel a little faster. So what I want is right about here is where I want the vase to stick out the most. And so that's where I put the most pressure. And now I am lightening the pressure as I come up uh, the rest of the way. And the rest of the way is not going to be the whole pot. It's only going to be to right about here because I'm going to go back down and refine the shape a little bit. So I'm pressing pretty light there. And right about here is where I want it to where I want it to belly out more. I'm pressing a little bit harder. And then now I've lightened my pressure. 
and I'm coming up the rest of the way. Okay, and we take it out. So that was actually pretty cool. I liked using that throwing stick. I highly recommend it. All right, now I'm going to, this is really wet, wet, floppy clay. I'm going to just throw this top part of the vase to thin out this wall. Okay. Compress the rim. And now I'm going to do a little bit of shaping from the outside. I'm going to take this um, soft red rib and I'm going to just, because I, I'm, this is the first time using this particular throwing stick and I did kind of push out in some spots a little bit more than I wanted to. So, and also this will clean it up some. And I want to just get that curve right here to be nice and um, not, uh, what's the word, uh, smooth, to have like a smooth transition. And then I'm going to use it here at the top. I'm actually going to get another rib to, to do this top a little bit better because I find the red ribs are just a little too soft and I like to have something to press against. So I'm going to use this rib. I like the curve here. And I'm going to just, from where my fingers can go, start to come up. And now I'm pressing, not hard, but up against that rib. And pressing it out. Now I have throwing lines on the insides. And I'm just going to clean up a little bit. Which, you know, you can leave them there if you want. And sometimes I just leave it. It's kind of messy. <laughs> This one, let's see if I can fix it. Okay, that's good. So, if we look at the picture, it's not quite, still not quite what I want. I, I'm a bellied out just a little too much. So I might take my red rib and see if I can push it in a little bit. So I did a little. I don't want to throw it off too much, which I've thrown it off a bit. So let's fix that. Very light touch right now. So even though I don't have the right shape, I'm going to leave it. And as I think I said earlier, I'm going, I don't trim the base, but I will, um, I don't trim a foot, but I will trim the size a little because if you remember, the center was pretty narrow. So I still have some clay down here. But right now it's it's too soft, so I'm just gonna clean it up a little. Whoops. And then I will let it uh, dry some. And when it gets to that, not leather hard, but before it's leather hard, I will trim it. I'll show you how I do that with the rib with the vase right side up, which is really a great way to do vases. You can do that with any size vase, um, especially the big ones. It's good because those are even harder to turn over. All right. So that's it for this part and I will show you the next part shortly. So I have here the one of the vases I threw the other day that's um, leather hard at the top and kind of a soft leather hard at the bottom and ready to trim. It's still attached to the bat. And I find this a really great way to trim vases. You can do it with bigger ones, small ones, but it gives you the advantage of not having to try to figure out how to get with this turned over, especially when you have a narrow neck, to be centered in a chuck or whatever method you use to trim things upside down. So I'm taking just a tool. You take whatever trimming tool you're comfortable with, and I... Um, tend to start kind of where the curve is. You can pick where you want to do, where, where it starts to go in. And I'm only lightly trimming there because that part doesn't really need much trimming. And then as I get to the base, which is where all the extra clay is, that's where I kind of push harder to get more clay. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm going to tap it. Okay, it feels pretty good. Um, so I'm going to just take my wooden tool now, and I'm just going to take away just a little bit. And then I'm going to create a little bit of an indentation so that when the vase is sitting on a table, there's a little bit of a rise so it's not sitting flat on the table. And I'm going to take my red rib and I'm going to, where I would have the trimming lines, I'm just going to smooth it out a bit. This has um, grog in it, so I, I also want to push the grog down. So I'm, you know, kind of, it's a, a medium touch, I guess, you would say. And that smooths it out. You can still sort of see those lines, but at least, hopefully the grog is not pushed out anymore. It's pushed back into the clay. All right, so you can, at this point, you can either leave the vase on here until it pops off on its own and you'll have a flat bottom, or you can take a uh, wire with, you know, just a regular wire and cut it off, or I like to use a curly wire so you create some interest when you turn the vase over. So I just take the wire and I just slowly slide back and forth. So the other issue is that if it was to just pass leather hard, you might have trouble doing that. So now we turn it over and you see that really fun bottom. So I'm going to take my finger and just smooth out the edges. This is a little soft, so I'm probably going to have to do it again when it dries up some more, but I wanted to show you what I do with my finger. And then I pat this, push it in just a little bit so that the all these lines are not sitting they, you know, all the um, part from the curly, curvy wire won't be sitting on your table. So the only part that really sits on your table is on the edge, which you've smoothed out. And that's how I make and trim these small little vases. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.